Welcome back to another devlog guys, I'm Jackson and in this one today I'm going to show you some behind the scenes of my flying AI, so I'm going to show you my behavior trees and my blueprints and my behavior tree tasks um, and I'm going to do a playthrough first so that you can see what I've been working on and then we'll go through the blueprints after but I've been doing a lot of work on flying AI today so here's what the game looks like, we have this dude <laughs> this dude he shoots drunk projectiles at you so we get the swaying. Um, now I need to find one of my dragons. Do we have any dragons on this map? Oh god, he's scary. <laughs> mm, doesn't look like we do. And that's not the exit. Okay, here's the exit. Oh, there's a dragon. Okay. So, check him out. Shooting fire at me with a uh, a barrage sort of. Oh my god! Oh, I'm getting so fucking wrecked. But check him out. He's just circling around above me. He charges his shot and then shoots fireballs at me, and I'm getting so wrecked. <laughs> I put my health up to 10,000 so that um, I wouldn't die once I got hit a couple of times. Like I thought I'd just be invincible, but he's like absolutely wrecking me. Yeah, that's my flying AI at the moment. He is meant to patrol um, before he sees you, but apparently that's a little bit broken by the looks of things, so that's fine. But let me go through and I'll show you the logic. Um, let's go to the dragon behavior tree. And yeah, okay. So this is his behavior tree. Select a node at the top. Um, top priority is a wait if he gets stunned or dead or something like that. He can heal himself using items, uh, but the flying AI is down here. So um, when he spots a target, he plays a sound, which is a sound letting you know that he's chasing you. Um, the first thing that he does is he has a simple parallel node here which gets him to update his rotation to look at you while he's flying around you. So the way that this works is it just has an execute which toggles an event in here which runs an event here which basically just repeats this bit of logic which is just setting his rotation to face whoever his target is. His target's down there. Um, I'm not going to go through and explain bit by bit, obviously, because I'd, this video would be a fucking hour-long tutorial. It'd be a flying AI tutorial if I went through each bit, but basically he's got this component, or this logic inside of his flying AI component, which lets him update his rotation to face whoever his target is. So while he's strafing around you in the air with the flying logic down here, he's always going to be facing the target. So while he's doing that, we have a sequence node. Um, and this here, we're seeing if we can select a move to location above the target. So I'll run it, jump into that, and I'll show you what he does when he's checking for a move to location. So the inputs for this over here on the right hand side of the screen, hopefully you can see that. Um, he has this destination type enumerator, enumerator, and I've got a few different types in here, random in level bounds, random near origin actor, random near location, or random patrol point. If I set this to random near origin actor, I'll show you what that does inside of the task. It switches this location node here, which is providing us with a provisional flying location. So if I've got it set to near origin actor, the origin actor being the target character that we're chasing, then we're getting a location of the target character, and then I'm running this little function down here, which is just generating a location around that point. So inside of that, it just looks like this. I'm just getting a random float within a range, something like that. Uh, yeah, a random float within some deviation. And then that's just creating a vector at a specific height, a thousand. Um, which is set inside of the behavior tree 
um, task up here, just there. And then that's being returned as the vector, which is going to be our, our move to location. So we're getting the location of our target, adding a random vector to it, and then that's the move to location. Now we can use that with a vector as the center instead of a target actor, or what we can do is use the bounding box around the outside of the level and just get a random location inside of that bounding box. So I've got a, a um, collision that's automatically generating over the entire randomly generated map, the same width, length, and some height. And this logic here is just returning a random point inside of that box. So if you want your AI to roam, he can just pick a random point in that and then roam to that point. Now, once you've got a point, you need to check if the AI can actually reach that point because it might not be a valid point. There might be something blocking the way because I don't have AI pathfinding working in here. So what I do is I do a box trace. And what the box trace does is traces from the location of the flying AI to the provisional flying location which we provided in that previous bit that I just showed you. And the size of the box trace, the half size, is the width of the capsule component on the flying AI. So on our dragon, on our dragon, the capsule component, this. I just do a box trace that's the size of that so that we can see if there's a clear path to where he's trying to fly. And if that fails, we repeat it for a maximum of 10 times. And if it succeeds after that, then we finish, it as, finish execute a success and then we carry on. Otherwise, it fails and we don't end up moving. So that's the flying. That's the flying location logic. Um, and then the flying move to over here, once you've got the location, you actually have to move to the location. So the way that I do that, we check if we're at the location already. Um, ignore that because we don't actually need that. I've got some debugging things, so I've put little... I'll show you. You can draw debug boxes at specific locations, so if I want to see where he's trying to move to, I can just have that set to true. We're doing a box trace just like before to see if he can actually get to the location, and if he can't get to the location, then we're just automatically failing because we're not going to be able to get there, so this task fails. Now, when we're moving there, we're checking if we're at the location, and if we're not, we're checking if our velocity is less than the max velocity that we're allowed to have. If it's not, then we're setting our velocity or increasing our velocity and we're updating our rotation. Um, and then next frame, we're checking again, are we at the location? Is our velocity less than the max? Increase the velocity. Now, while we're setting our velocity, we're also updating our rotation. So um, that's how that works if you're interested in that. <laughs> But you want to, you want to, you need to update the um, the way that your AI is heading. Otherwise, he's just going to be flying around facing the same way. So you want him to face the velocity. Um, and then you, I have an option for him to immediately stop or not at the end. If I want him to immediately stop, if you don't have him immediately stop, because I'm using the flying um, movement mode in the character movement he'll go through the point and continue moving even after you set his velocity to zero or even after you've stopped applying the velocity rather. Now, that's that's a brief overview of my flying AI. I know that was very brief, but here's another thing that I'll show you. We've got um, a projectile barrage thing down here. Um, so I set up a projectile launching logic and I've just got this cool little timer. Not a little timer, but just a bit of logic to repeat firing so it's like you pick a target you decide you want to launch a barrage just launch projectiles at some interval until you reach uh, whatever amount of repetitions that you want and that's what the dragon was doing with his fire he's launching like 10 fireballs in a short period of time um, and they're pre predicting projectiles as well, which I think I covered in a previous video. So he predicts where you're going to be and then launches a projectile, projectile at that location. Oh man, this is a long video already. Is that everything that I wanted to show you? Um, yeah, I think it is. I'm just going to play for a little bit and just show you a little bit more of how the game looks at the moment. <laughs> oh god, there's so many enemies. Oh, he teleported? Where? Oh my god. 
Oh, it makes it so hard when you've got that drunk effect. I need to play more carefully. Okay. Oh, the dragon. Fuck the dragon. Alright, we're going this way instead. <laughs> okay. We're safe over here. I might. I got my inventory ready. My health elixir ready. Okay, that's the exit. And here is a... Oh, that dragon is still fucking trying to shoot me. I need to fix that. Okay. I built a behavior. She's going to try and come around here and find me now because she knows where I was the last time she saw me. <laughs> oh, she didn't see me go around this corner, though. Oh, fuck. All right, I'm going to try going to try to kill her. You ready? Gotcha. Um, I think that's everything, honestly. That's everything for now. What's this next level looking like? Oh, I love this dude. He looks so fucking hectic. He's very strong, though. I don't know how I'm going to be able to kill him. Yeah, nah, screw that. Um, errors, yep, that's normal. What am I going to do from here? Uh, I have no idea. I guess you'll see in the next devlog. Peace out, guys. I hope that was helpful or at least entertaining. <laughs> see ya.